Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant. Yes, I work one with all you, you know. Hey, we're going to start watching uh, something a bit new here in Ting, you know what I mean? This one is called History of the Byzantine Empire. I'm not sure if this is a series or not, but you know, I always wanted to learn more about the Byzantine Empire. So, this is my chance to do it. Go ahead and like this video and, you know, comment. I like to read your comments. I read every single one of them. I don't respond to everyone. But I like to read them all. And I do show my appreciation. Uh, thank you all for the comments and thing, you know. But uh, let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer. See what I'm going here with the history of the Byzantine Empire. When did this empire begin? The answer to that question has no straightforward answer, but a common modern consensus is that Byzantine history begins in the early 4th century AD with the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, his adoption of Christianity and the establishment of a new imperial capital on the Greek town of Byzantium, renamed Constantinople, and now the modern city of Istanbul were the building blocks for this Christian Roman Empire. In addition, Byzantine Empire used Roman law, had a Roman identity, and maintained many of the literary and social traditions of the Roman Empire long after the fall of Rome in AD 476. The use of the term Byzantine is often employed to distinguish the Roman Empire after 476 to that prior, but they are the same entity. During the 4th oh. century, the Roman Empire was beset from all sides. The Berbers in Africa, the Picts and Saxons in Britain, the Alemanni on the Rhine, the Sumatians and Goths on the Danube, and the Sasanian Empire, the only organized polity the Roman Empire had to deal with, was in the Middle East. For most of the 4th century, the Romans were able to destroy any threat to their borders. The biggest threat, it seemed, were the Romans themselves. For example, Magnus Magnentius killed Emperor Constans I and fought a destructive civil war with his rival, Constantius II. The beginning of the end of the Roman Empire occurred with the Battle of Adrianople in 378, where antagonized Visigoths annihilated a Roman army of 30,000 men as well as killing the Emperor Valens. The death of the Emperor Theodosius I in 395 marked the permanent division between the Western Roman Empire, centered at Milan, and later Ravenna, and the Eastern Roman Empire, centered at Constantinople. In the 5th century, the Western Roman Empire continued to recede slowly into Italy, with the occasional respite under the leadership of the Emperors Majorian and Anthemius. In 476, the Emperor Romulus Augustus was deposed by an Ostrogoth called Odovaca, who became... That's an interesting look at uh, after superpowers kind of collapse, everything just slowly start dissolving around them. You know, everything that they created. That's kind of like what happened with the Soviet Union. Everything just start dissolving around them. And and it seems like it, it always uh, degenerates into war or something because I guess leadership would be shaky after having such a strong leader who conquered all these lands, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Yes, that's, that's some scary and un uncertain times to live in. King of Italy, Julius Nepos, also Western Roman Emperor, managed to retain Dalmatia until 480, when he was assassinated. Henceforth, there was only ever one Roman Emperor. In the East, the Balkans were a war zone, first ravaged by the Visigoths and then the Huns. There were occasional wars between Persia, but generally no great changes happened there. Several emperors, such as Theodosius II and Leo I, tried to aid the Western Roman Empire against the many barbarian kingdoms springing up against it, especially the Vandals that had captured Africa and plundered the empire's coasts, seeking booty and slaves. In the 6th century, Justinian I launched several campaigns westward to reclaim some of the former Western territories. He successfully captured Africa, then Sicily, 
Italy, Sardinia, and the other western Mediterranean islands. He also conquered southern Spain, Dalmatia, and western Illyria. Oh, wow. The Persians and Romans fought many wars over the kingdom of Armenia and the frontiers in the east. However, in the west, having defeated old enemies, such as the Vandals and Goths, the Romans now were faced with new ones. Africa was constantly beset by the Berbers. Italy, once secured from the Ostrogoths, was first invaded by the Franks and then the Lombards. In Spain, the Visigoths were keen to retake what they had lost. Along the Danube, many nomadic peoples, such as the Avars, now threatened this frontier. After the reign of Justinian I, the emperors Justin II, Tiberius II, and Morris were largely occupied with these wars. The 7th century opened with the death of the very capable, but as equally this unpopular is, Emperor is Morris being leader executed after leader by inherited wars. Focus. The Persians used the excuse of the death of Morris to launch an all-out war that saw the loss of the Levant, Egypt, and parts of Anatolia. The Avars and Slavs occupied most of the Balkans. The Slavs settled these new regions, forming what is known as Sclavonia, or tribal confederations. Italy was divided between the Roman territories and Lombard princes. Spain was effectively lost, but Africa was still secure. Heraclius deposed Phocas, checked the Avars in the Balkans, and decisively defeated the Persians in 628 and had them restore the frontiers before the war began 26 years before. The following year, Arab raiders infused with the zeal of Islam years. started raiding Syria and Palestine. Several campaigns followed when in 636, the Battle of Yarmouk saw a decisive defeat for the Romans, resulting in the Emperor Heraclius pulling his forces back to Anatolia and Egypt. Having spent all of the Empire's resources and manpower fighting the Persians, this loss spelt the end of the Roman Levant. Egypt was lost in 642, and Africa in 698. The Battle of the Masks in 655 saw the end of Roman domination of the Mediterranean Sea, and the beginning of Arab coastal raids for booty and slaves. Let's the the crumbling of a superpower. managed to hold onto parts of Italy, Sicily, and enclaves in the Balkans, as well as Anatolia. From 692 to 717, the Eastern Roman Empire was seriously weakened, with unrelenting pressure by the Arabs and civil wars. Constantinople was besieged by the Arabs in 717, but once this was defeated, the empire began to stabilise. Throughout the 8th century, there was slow progress in the Balkans to reassert authority over the Slavs, and beat back the Bulgars who Man, had newly arrived they just in keep fighting to control. The wars against the Arabs had descended into a series of raids and counter-raids after the failure of the Arab siege of Constantinople. The Romans nominally controlled the area around the Taurus and Anti-Taurus mountains that provided a natural defence between the two powers. Roman power over Italy was coming to an end through neglect and the rising power of the Franks and Lombards. However, by the end of the century, the Romans had retaken Greece. The empire was also internally more stable after 743, with the defeat of the rival emperor Artabastos. Constantine V reformed the empire, which made it much more internally stable and a stronger military. After 743, the next major civil war was not until 820 to 823 between Michael the Amorian and Thomas the Slav. In the 9th century, successes against the Bulgars abruptly ended with the Battle of Pliska, which saw the total destruction of the Roman army and the death of the Emperor Nikiforos I. Crete was lost to the Arabs, which eventually led to the Romans being thrown off of it. However, the Empire was starting to experience an economic revival and eventually put a stop to the Arab raids into the Empire from the east. Basil I managed to secure and expand the Empire's territories in southern Italy. In the 10th century... The so everybody was coming after them, the, the more they crumble, it's like everybody was trying to get a piece of it. It's Despite crazy. initial setbacks against the Bulgars, the Empire expanded in the east to eventually capture northern Syria, western Armenia and Cyprus in the east. They regained Crete and destroyed the Bulgarian Empire. 
thus reclaiming the Balkans, as well as prevent the Rus making inroads. Southern Italy was also strengthened, and its territories expanded. In the 11th century, these conquests continued with the whole of Armenia being conquered. Edessa was captured, and an expedition to Sicily nearly succeeded in retaking the important island. However, in the 1040s, the appearance of the Pechenegs and Hungarians threatened the Balkans again. The Turks also appeared on the frontiers of Armenia, and the Normans started taking for themselves pieces of southern Italy. Man. The response of the government was so mismanaged and poorly judged that by 1071, all of Eastern Roman Italy had been lost. With the Battle of Manzica that same year, Armenia was lost, and the subsequent civil war between Romanus IV and Michael VII left Anatolia defenceless and was occupied by the Turks in the years following. The frequency of civil wars and revolts in this century further weakened the empire and allowed foreign enemies to take advantage. By 1081, the empire only consisted of the Balkans and enclaves in Anatolia. The Normans threatened to take Greece, but abandoned their invasion in 1084 with the death of their ruler. The Romans then focused on beating back the Pechenegs and Cumans that raided across the Danube. In 1095, the First Crusade was called, which the Eastern Romans were able to use to regain the west and northern coast of Asia Minor. In the 12th century, the empire was largely concerned with keeping out the Turks in central Anatolia from raiding the Roman lands in coastal Anatolia. The Pechenegs were destroyed at the Battle of Boroya in 1122, securing the Danube, but conflict still occurred between the Serbs and Hungary. The Normans attacked from the west several times, but these were all eventually defeated. John II and Manuel I managed to conquer southern Anatolia and vassalize the county of Edessa and Principality of Antioch. However, a series of coups and destructive wars saw this apparent resurgence of Eastern Roman power broken and turned around yet again. Many regions were lost to the foreign attack. Some provinces, such as Bulgaria and parts of Anatolia, broke away, and the empire was plagued by constant revolts and civil wars from 1180 to 1204. During the 13th century, from 1204 to 1261... Ooh, let's stop for... That's a lot of information there. But it's cool. It's like watching, watching them get strong and then get pushed back. Get strong and then get pushed back. I mean, that's a long time to be a superpower. Long time. <clears throat> and it seems like everybody was trying to come at them from every corner too. Get a chance to take down the big dog. Um, there was no Byzantine Empire. The capital had been conquered by the Fourth Crusade, breaking the central unity of the empire. The empire's lands were grabbed by a myriad of local rulers, attempting to assert their dominance over the region that had been the Byzantine Empire. The Despotate of Epirus, Empire of Trebizond, and Empire of Nicaea were the main successors of the Eastern Roman Empire. They were all Orthodox Christian, ruled and peopled by those of the previous Eastern Roman regime, and were the same in social, administrative, and political institutions. The Empire of Nicaea secured its lands in western and northern Anatolia, and spent decades retaking the areas of Thrace, Macedonia, and the Aegean islands that had formerly belonged to it. When Constantinople was retaken in 1261, the empire until 1282 expanded and reasserted its dominance as a local power in the region. However, it was surrounded by enemies. The Bulgarians, Serbs, and Turks were all well known, and the Italian Merchant Republic of Genoa and Venice were also heavily invested in the region. Others such as the Sicilians also posed a threat, as did the surviving princes of Archaea, Athens, and Epirus. After 1282, the empire went into decline, partially due to internal weakness and also the ineptitude of its emperor, Andronicus II, whose long reign saw serious reverses. Anatolia was largely lost, and the military power of the state was failing. It also experienced several crises that it dealt with poorly, such as the revolt of the Catalan mercenary company that devastated Thrace and settled in Athens. 
the beginning of the 14th century was met with a gentle recovery of the situation and civil war between the members of the imperial dynasty. Andronicus III led the empire into what seemed the beginning of a new recovery, despite failures in Anatolia at the Battle of Pelicanon Still in 1339 back. and the Battle of Rusicastro in 1332 against the Bulgarians, Andronicus annexed Epirus and Thessaly, as well as regained several wealthy islands such as Lesbos and Chios. This apparent revival was cut short when Andronicus III died in 1341. The resultant civil war from 1341 to 1347, then every, immediately every time a followed dies by the back Black then, Death in 1347, didn't. ruined the Eastern Roman Empire's chances of recovery. The empire lost all of its significant territories in the multiple civil wars that followed, and lost any chance of reversing these disasters themselves because of the incompetence of John V and the growing power of the Ottoman Turks. By the end of the century, the Eastern Roman Empire comprised Constantinople and its environs, Moria in the Peloponnese, and a few small islands in the Aegean. In 1394, the capital of the empire was besieged by the Ottoman Turks. The 15th century was the last century. In 1402, the siege of Constantinople by the Ottomans, which had now continued for eight years, was broken by the Ottoman defeat at the Battle of Ankara. The Emperor Manuel II regained Thessalonica, the countryside around Constantinople, and a strip of land running along the Black Sea coast. It was a small recovery, and one the Eastern Romans held on to for 20 years. Further gains were made against the Principality of Archaea. In 1422, the Turks besieged Constantinople again. The Eastern Romans survived the assault, but the death knell was near. In 1432, the Eastern Romans captured the whole of the Peloponnese. In 1444, in tandem with the Crusade of Varna, Constantine Palaeologus led an army that captured Boeotia and vassalized the Latin Duke of Athens. With the defeat of the Crusade of Varna, the Eastern Roman Empire's last hope of challenging the Ottomans and producing any sort of recovery Man. as Constantine's conquests in Greece were quickly reversed. In 1453, Constantinople was besieged and conquered by the Ottoman Turks. The Peloponnese followed in 1460, and the Empire of Trebizond, the last remaining fragment of the Roman legacy, was conquered in 1461 by the Ottomans. And thus, the Eastern Roman Empire came to an end. Oh, wow. Man. I really like that one. That was really cool to see that. Like I said, it was like the the falling down of a superpower. How they just slowly just lost land. Which land was the main thing, important thing back then to to show your power, is to secure land. That was a good story, there, man. That was that was good. The storytelling was riveting too. Yeah, I'm gonna leave a description in the link. A link in the description <laughs> so you guys could check this out check out this channel and thing but that was good yeah yeah i hope you guys enjoy watching that with me listen take care of each other all right cool runnings